The Gaussian blur filter is an implementation of the popular Gaussian function. This effectively acts as a low-pass filter, reducing the high-frequency components of a layer and rendering a very smooth blur effect. I'll show you some practical uses for this filter. First, as with any filter, I want to ensure I have the layer selected that I want to apply the filter to. In this case, it's the background layer, which is usually the image information. Then I can go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. This is a very straightforward dialog with just a radius slider. Increasing the radius will increase the amount of blur being applied. The slider only goes up to 100 pixels. Should you want to apply a larger radius value, you can type it into the input box, then use the tab key to apply it. Be aware, however, that larger values are more computationally taxing. You can also click drag on the actual document view to change the radius. Once I am happy with the amount of blur, I can click apply to commit the effect. This is a destructive operation. Once the blur has been applied, the only way to recover the original image is to undo the Gaussian blur operation. I can, however, apply Gaussian blur non-destructively as a live filter layer. On this example, I'll select the background layer, then go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now we have a dialog that is very similar to the destructive version, and you'll also see a Gaussian Blur layer which has been child layered into the background pixel layer. I can drag the radius slider up to blur this image, but notice that the edges are now blurring to alpha. By default, the live Gaussian Blur is also blurring values in the alpha channel of the selected layer. This is useful for various workflows, but not in this particular instance, so I can check Preserve Alpha to retain the edge opaqueness. You will notice there is no Apply button. I can close this live Gaussian Blur dialog and come back later to edit the radius if required. Because this blur effect is being applied as a layer, I can hide it to show the original image, then I can show it again to bring back the Gaussian blur. One major advantage of this layer-based approach is that I can easily mask the effect. The Gaussian blur layer already has its own mask, so there is no need to add a separate mask layer. I can simply make sure I have the Gaussian blur layer selected, then I could select the gradient tool from the tools panel and click drag from the bottom of the image to draw out a gradient mask, holding shift to constrain the angle of the gradient. As I move the black gradient stop higher, you can see that the bottom area gradually becomes blurrier. I can also move the midpoint up and down the gradient line to alter the balance between the black and white stops. I think just above the halfway mark looks good, so I'll leave it there. To re-enter the Gaussian Blur dialog, and change the radius, I can single click on the thumbnail icon and move the slider until I am happy with the result. Then I can close the dialog. The live filter variant of the Gaussian blur can also be used in conjunction with blending options for some useful effects. Here is a good example. With this image, I'll add a live Gaussian blur, bring the radius up, then set the blend mode to overlay. This produces a really strong diffuse glow effect, but it's affecting the darker tones in the image and crushing too much detail. With the Gaussian blur layer selected, I can click the cog icon here to access the blend options, then drag the left hand node down on the source layer ranges graph. This blends away the Gaussian blur effect from the darker areas. And I can configure this further by unchecking linear and click dragging to create more nodes on the graph. So what I am doing here is blending the Gaussian blur layer predominantly into the highlight detail and then blending it away from the shadow and midtone detail. The end result is a diffuse glow effect that only renders on the brighter areas of the image. Again, I can hide the Gaussian blur layer 
so you can see the before and the after. I will end this video on a final example. You may have been handed an image where the editor has been overzealous with the sharpening. I can use Gaussian Blur as a low pass filter to reduce the strong sharpening. First, I'll make sure I'm previewing the document at a 100% zoom level or higher. I may go in further to 200%. The shortcut for this is Command 2 on Mac, Control 2 on Windows. Then I'll add a live Gaussian Blur filter layer. And because I'm using the live version, I'll check Preserve Alpha. Then I can type a small radius value in, such as 0.5 pixels, and use Return or Enter to apply it. I can always use higher values, such as 0.9 pixels, if the image still looks too sharp. It's a good idea to preview at 100%. So that's Command 1 on Mac, Control 1 on Windows, to get a more accurate idea of how the Gaussian Blur is affecting the image. I can hide the Gaussian Blur layer to see the initial oversharpened image, then show it again to see the softened result. And that was a look at the various practical uses of the Gaussian Blur filter. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.